Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn. I'm Alice. And today we're going to be teaching you how to use Flask. So Flask is a backend Python framework that allows you to make your web pages dynamic. So to learn Flask, we're going to be using this web app, which if you see, I'm, I input any kind of string and then I pick one of four options for what I want to do to it. So if I reverse it, it reverses. If I check the length, it returns the length and so on. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel, comment if you have any questions, and also look in the description for more information about the topics we discussed today and the link to our GitHub with the code we're going to go over today. Let's talk a little bit more about Flask itself. So again, Flask is a lightweight Python backend framework. And if you're not familiar with backend frameworks, um, first of all, writing backend code lets you create dynamic web apps that process user input rather than just static web pages. And then a backend framework is a foundation that you can build your backend on top of, and it makes it easier and more quick to um, create your app. All right, and then for some instantiation stuff. So uh, to install our dependencies, we're going to be using pip, which stands for pip installs packages. So it's a Python package manager. The first thing we're going to install with pip is something called a virtual environment. And a virtual environment is basically something that lets you uh, containerize your app. Um, so it's where all of your dependencies for your app live and um, it won't affect anything else besides your app. So like if you have other projects on your computer, for example, like they won't be affected by the dependencies that you install um, while you're running a virtual environment. So to do that, we're gonna do pip and I'm using pip3 because um, we're using Python 3. Um, pip3 install virtual m. So this is just installing the virtual environment package itself. Um, yeah, so uh, it's already satisfied, but um, now we're going to uh, create a virtual environment. So to do that, we're going to use the virtual n package and we're going to give our virtual environment a name. So I'm just going to call it Flask N. All right, we created it. Um, and the last thing we need to do is activate it. So to do that, we run source and then the name of your virtual environment slash bin slash activate. All right, so now you can see our virtual environment is up and running because it's in these parentheses to the left of your path. Um, so going into the repo, let's go to main.py. So at the top here, you can see that um, we have uh, one dependency. So we have Flask and we're importing a few of Flask's like sub modules. So the only thing we need to import or install manually is Flask um, because it is also a Python package. So let's do that. If three install Flask. So now we have Flask and um, now we can run our entire app and everything will work. One last thing, if anyone else needs to install your Flask app or you're just running a clean install, we don't want to have to potentially add, like manually install a lot of different packages if your app is really big. So we're going to create what's called a requirements.txt file. To do that, we're going to run python-m pip freeze arrow requirements.txt. Yeah, it's a long command, but um, yeah. And as you can see, we have a new requirements.txt file and it has all the dependencies that we need for our entire app. Let's say you're just like running this on a clean install. Um, you just have to do one step now, just install this requirements.txt file and it will install everything at once. One thing real quick, you see up here, it says app equals flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore. So um, this is basically, it just makes it so that when we're running the app, we use main.py as our point of entry. So that being said, I'm going to run this app right now, Python main.py. And as you can see, it's active. Let's refresh this. All right, here we are. 
Okay, I'm gonna give a brief overview of this main.py file. The first things that you see, um, there's these uh, app.route functions, and then inside you have this string. Um, so basically this string is uh, typically called an endpoint, and this is what is tacked onto the end of your main URL. Um, as you can see right here, this is our localhost URL, which we are hosting our backend on. And this is just like tacked on to the end of it. And it contains a descriptor, so backslash palindrome, and also a parameter, which is denoted by the two angle brackets here. Basically an endpoint is like something that defines what you're going to do with the information that hits this endpoint. So you can see here, we define a function that runs every time someone redirects to this URL called is palindrome. And then we get the text parameter from the URL and we pass it into this is palindrome function so that the function runs on that parameter. To make this a little bit more clear, I'm just going to manually change this back in URL. So I'm going to make it redirect to palindrome and then just a uh, random word, so I'll just do word. And as you can see, it got the parameter from the URL, which is word. And then it says word is not a palindrome. So it ran the function correctly. Now we're gonna talk about this home function, which is really the meat of our web app. So if we look at this first line, we're going to app.route, which Alice talked about. And then it's just backslash because this is the first thing we want to see when we just open up this URL here with no additional text on the end, since this is our homepage. And then our methods are get and post. So get renders the homepage. So if our method is get, then that means we want to get this HTML file right here, which is renders our homepage. And then if our method is post, then that means that our user is posting some kind of input. So in this case, right, if I were to type in hello world, pick an option and press submit, when I press that submit button, I'm posting some kind of input. So then if we go into our method, it says if request.method is get, render the homepage, right? And this render template is something that we imported at the top here. It's a built-in method that comes with Flask. So it's saying if request method is get, then render this HTML file, which is our homepage here render the home page. And then otherwise, if our method is post, then the first thing we want to do is get which of the four options here our user actually chose. So which one of these four did they pick? And the way that we do that is we have this line request.form.get text choice. So text choice, if we go to, so request.form.get refers to this home.html file. So if we go here, you'll see that all four of our options that we have on the form, palindrome, length of string, are how, all have this name field of text choice. And so what that does is that when we say request.form.get text choice, we say of the four that these chose, return the value. So if I as a user were to choose count words, it would return a value of count. So in this case, my choice, if I do request.form.get text choice, and I actually had clicked count words and press submit, then this would return a value of count for this name of text choice. So then this would equal count since that was the value. And so then we say if choice equals count, which it does, then we're going to return this line here. And so let's break this down going from the inside out. So first we have this part, count words, and then text equals request.form.get user input. So what this means is this string here, count words, matches exactly to the name of one of our functions. So in this case, this count words function, and it has this text parameter, which matches here. So what this part means is that we're calling the function count words on the parameter text of this request.form.get user input which if we go, it's the same exact request.form.get that we used up here, except instead of getting text choice, which was the name of one of our four options, we're getting the user input, which is the name, if you scroll down, of this text area, which refers to this box here. That's how you create one of these boxes. That's called user input. So we get whatever the user input was, in this case, hello world. 
And so we get hello world and we pass it in as the parameter to our count words function right here. And so we're gonna run that count words function on hello world. And then we're gonna redirect to the URL for the count words function. So if we look at the count words function, we see we have that app.route to count text. So if we go here and we do count words and we press submit, you'll see here that it redirected us to the URL of backslash count and then backslash, if I just make this a little bigger, backslash hello world. It has those percentage 20s in because we had spaces in our string. So just ignore that. But you'll see that the backslash count and then the text parameter matches exactly to the URL that we ended up with. And then we also got the correct answer, which is two. So what this line does in summary is that it redirects you to the URL that you specified in app.route. And then once you get to that URL, it returns the result of calling the function you put in here and then the parameter that you called into that function. So we got redirected to the URL for count words. And then once we got there, we got the answer. So that this is the main function that drives all of our code. All of the other four up here are the functions for example, like the length string function, if you had chosen length string, the reverse, if you had chosen reverse, et cetera. So this is the end of the video. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. And please uh, like and subscribe for more content like this. And uh, please leave any comments if you have questions. Um, we have our the link to our source code on the decrypted GitHub, which is also linked in the description below. And we have some more additional resources for you to look at there as well. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye.